What are we going to get from the negative charge here? Well, We're going to get a field that looks a lot like this, right? But what are the differences going to be? What's the one obvious difference? Well, yeah, it's, it's going to be, yeah, they're going to be in this direction, right? Accepting that, what's the obvious difference? Well, aren't these further from this line than these are? No. Oh, there's... So it's going to be a lot weaker, right? Yeah. Now, again, don't take this as a model for your magnet. It won't work. Okay? But it still kind of gives you uh, some insight into the way it might work. Okay? So what you're going to get is you're going to get a... a, a, a significantly smaller field. These things are almost twice as far away, right? These forces are going to be like one-fourth as great. Okay, well, I've already drawn it too big. That's not one-fourth. That's not even closer to one-half than it is to one-fourth, okay? So I should have drawn that smaller, but I want it to be visible, so I'm kind of taking that much liberty, okay? But if you try to do it accurately, well, put these a little closer and then that might be accurate, right? Okay, and then uh, you're going to have something like this. It's not going to be all that much weaker. Then you're going to have something like this. Now, it's not going to point opposite to the direction of this because the directions from here to here are closer to vertical, right? In other words, the direction of this point to any of these charges is more vertical than the direction would be to the corresponding charge directly above, right? So if you want to be more accurate about it, it's going to be kind of more like this. And it's getting really pretty short here. I'm not doing a very good job of that. And maybe, well, yeah, okay. This isn't very well drawn. But now you get a resultant that I'll put in green. Okay, and these would be the actual forces. I'm sorry? No, no, I was, I was saying. Okay. Now, these would be forces if these were, you know, if you had electric charges up here, right? So this would kind of be a picture of your electric field, except your electric field would be in the opposite direction because these would be forces on negative charges, right? So it's not really your electric field, but your magnetic field would be the reverse of these vectors or something like it, okay? Now what's happening is you have now a current. An electric current through that aluminum strip, okay? And you got a chunk of magnet down here. Now whether this is the short edge, the long edge, the long thin edge, or the big flat edge, right? You know what I'm talking about. Uh, you're going to have a magnetic field that will either be toward the magnet or away from the magnet, right? Okay. And, of course, if you flip the magnet over, that field will be the reverse, assuming everything is symmetric, which it pretty much is, okay, for that particular magnet. And you can measure that, but we're not going to go to that much detail right now. So here's your current. Here's your magnet. And let's just say, for convenience, I'll, I'll draw the uh, field downward. Again, I didn't draw it as well as I could because it should have been symmetric, and why well, that sure isn't symmetric with that, is it? But you get the idea, okay? Well, for the most part, then, the magnetic field is pretty much down when you get toward the center with the magnet, right? And the current is interacting with that. 
And what I'd really like to know is if the current is in this direction and the magnetic field is in this direction, what's the direction of the force? Okay? And that's what I really kind of want you to uh, try to investigate. Okay, so this is current. To avoid overloading you, I was going to not use the symbol, but we use I for the current. I will use capital I. Your book will tend to use a lowercase I. Many authors will. But then that confuses it with the I vector. So then they'll use a J. Or maybe something else for the for the vector field e1, e2, e3, or something like that. Okay, but here's your current, and here's your magnetic field. And we use a capital B for magnetic field. Uh, the current is actually a vector because it has a direction, and the direction is important. The magnetic field is a vector, okay? So with this general idea in mind, what we really want to come down to is what's, how do you orient the magnet to get the maximum possible re, um, uh, force on the aluminum strip, right? Make sense?